Today we're talking about the infrastructure bill's bipartisan agreement to spend $65 billion on internet. Either we're getting some big improvements or Biden forgot to turn off roaming during his last visit to Ukraine. Now, If the last year has made anything crystal clear, it's that if the information superhighway doesn't have an off ramp into your community, well, you're a bit screwed. The internet has facilitated everything from unemployment applications to investing to schooling online. Now, With this $65 billion, Congress has tasked themselves with a mission. They're going to expand internet access across America. Now, Unfortunately, this is where the handshaking stops and the fist fighting begins. The current approach to expanding broadband is largely, well, if people can afford broadband and they're easy to attach a fiber optic cable to, private companies they got to take care of. Anyone else though, money please. If we can't make a profit connecting these communities to broadband services, well, someone's paying for it and it sure as heck ain't us. Now this means that the United States government ends up footing the bill for a lot of private companies to lay a lot of lines in rural communities. This whole thing creates another potential problem depending on which party you're asking. Monopolies. Now if you're the one laying these wires, well, they're your wires. In a lot of communities, your broadband provider options are Comcast or Move. Prices and broadband quality are set accordingly. Now, because of this, Democrats argue that expanding access to broadband might not be enough. You know, I have access to Lamborghinis. There's a dealership in Queens. I just can't afford them. In 2019, pew, research found that half of non-broadband users still say they don't subscribe to the service because it's too expensive. So there are really two issues facing expanding access to broadband getting more horses to water, and then ensuring that they drink it. While everyone in Congress agrees on the overall mission, more internet, there is disagreement over how to actually make the sausage. Democrats want to fund communities to build and manage their own new internet infrastructure, while Republicans want to contract all of that out to private companies. So what would any of this look like? Well, Let's start with the White House's perspective. Some local governments made long-term investments to build their own broadband networks without relying on the private sector. Biden is a big fan of this approach. It's certainly not very Comcastic. Now, this approach would put government-run broadband networks at the front of the line for new grants because they're providers with less pressure to turn profits and with a commitment to serving the entire community. The best example of this being a success story is the city with the best broadband in all of America. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Whoa, that's a curveball. Yes, the fourth largest city in Tennessee had a municipally owned telephone network, and in 2010, they decided to bundle in internet as well. Now let me be clear, this wasn't just like a flip of a switch, let there be browsing situation. It was a concerted almost quarter billion dollar investment to lay all these fiber optic cables, an $169 million loan and $11 million grant from the federal government, a grant program whose budget the White House would just love to back a dump truck full of money into. Now this publicly owned broadband wired faster internet to every home in Chattanooga at cheaper prices than private competitors. So what's the argument against this approach to increasing access to broadband? Well, There are two different ways of thinking about this issue. First, public broadband is bad, and second, public broadband shouldn't be a priority during this infrastructure building program. So first, the question of priority. Now, in the leading a horse to water, getting it to drink dual goals, which should get the focus? $65 billion is certainly going to go far, but it's not going to get you across the universal broadband finish line. The places where local governments are considering providing public internet aren't places that don't currently have some sort of private internet. 
The Republican approach would focus on contracting with private companies to expand out the networks to expand the grid, as opposed to making access to the grid better for people who are already there. A big obstacle is the reluctance of politicians to spend taxpayer money on something that's already being provided, no matter how poorly by private companies. Good news though, if this is your objection, well, the solution is simple. Little from column A, little from column B. We can compromise. Now, the other argument is a bit trickier to work into a compromise framework. Public broadband is inherently bad. Now this is where you get the big corporate lobbyist money. We could either spend this money improving our systems or bribing politicians to prevent systems from being improved. Easy choice. Now this ethical debate has been going on for decades, resulting in 17 states passing laws that explicitly prohibit local governments from offering broadband services. A subsection of this infrastructure proposal that's being debated right now would ban these sorts of bans. Now, the idea here is something similar to the healthcare debate currently going on as well. Public options are inherently bad. Republicans want to promote competition by limiting government run broadband networks through the country. You know, the competition. And then this competition logic, as I've currently presented it, is a bit strange. Because, well, a public option adds to competition. Going back to Chattanooga, Comcast used to be the only game in town. Then the government built their own fiber optic system, Comcast sued to protect their monopoly and lost, and now that they have some competition, they're actually improving their offerings a bit. To understand the underlying mentality for this argument as it needs to be presented, we need to take a step back and shift our paradigm a little bit. Broadband, well, it's a product, not a right. Sure, try to give everyone the opportunity to buy the product, but let's not have the government stand in the way of private industry trying to make a profit. The state laws banning municipalities from building their own broadband are holdovers from a time when internet access was a near luxury, a consumer product rather than a utility. <coughs> Sir, would you like some caviar with that dank meme? Put another way, do you want to focus these funds on making cheaper, better car dealerships and population centers, or underwriting the opening of new full price dealerships in truly rural areas? Now that's the context in which the federal government is currently debating how to dole out the $65 billion that they agreed upon. Thank you, and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, if you're interested in learning more about what's actually in the infrastructure bill, I made a playlist where I go through the line items and spending debates right over here. Now I'd like to thank my patrons for making these videos possible. If you want to support independent nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching.